Up your kitesurfing game with our beginner's guide. Kitesurfing has to be one of the coolest sports you can do on water, but how do you get started in the first place? Where can you learn and how long does it take? To find out all about becoming a bona fide kitesurfer, we spoke to UK instructor. What is kitesurfing? Kitesurfing is a wind-powered water sport that uses a kite and a board to propel you across the water. Despite the name, it doesn't have to involve wave surfing. Kitesurfing can be done on mirror flat lagoons, as well as in choppy seas or big waves. All you need is wind and water. There's a lot of fun and progression to be had with kitesurfing. Once you've mastered the basics of riding along and staying upwind, you can start going faster, jumping, doing freestyle tricks, riding waves or going on long, downwinders, along the coast. What skills do you need to get started? Most beginners are completely new to board sports, water sports and kite flying, so lessons start from scratch. Many have never flown a kite or done another water sport in their life. Some have never even put on a wetsuit, says Kirsty Jones. For safety reasons, you should be comfortable swimming in open water. How fit do you need to be? You don't need to be super fit to kitesurf. And the kit is lightweight, so you don't need lots of muscle strength either. However, a general level of fitness will help you progress faster, give you more stamina on the water and help you avoid injuries. Do you need lessons? Yes, any kitesurfer who respects the sport will agree that beginner lessons are essential. As well as getting you up and riding as soon as possible, a good instructor will furnish you with essential safety know-how and procedures. Without this knowledge, you're a danger to yourself and everyone else on the water and beach. Where can you get lessons? You can find kitesurf schools and instructors around the globe. Most allow you to book online, and they offer anything from the choice of weekday and weekend lessons in longer packages. In Cabaret in the Dominican Republic, or at a whole host of other camps based everywhere from Egypt to Brazil to Sri Lanka in the Caribbean. How do you choose an instructor or kite school? Advises Luke Denny, but in my opinion, it's not good enough to simply go through the syllabi. An instructor with lots of pre- and post-qualification experience is in a better position to coach you safely and successfully. They should also have a real passion for people. Without this, they're unlikely to give you the care, attention and confidence boost that new kiters need. If you're unsure, ask friends or other kiters for recommendations. An instructor with lots of pre- and post-qualification experience is in a better position to coach you safely and successfully. If you're learning overseas, make sure that you can communicate easily with your instructor. And don't be afraid to ask about the kit you'll be using. Learning with new equipment that's in excellent condition is ideal, and beginners should always be given suitable flotation vests and helmets. Learning with substandard equipment is not recommended. Denny says. What kit do you need for lessons? Any decent instructor or kite school should provide the kit. They'll have a range of different kites, boards and safety equipment to suit you and a full range of different wind conditions. In some cases, you may need your own wetsuit. Check with the school first. Sun protection is important, too, especially if you're learning abroad. Consider things like waterproof sun cream, a rash vest thin top to protect your arms, a cap and polarized sunglasses. How many lessons do you need before you're up and riding? Most people need around 10 to 12 hours or a course of three lessons to get up and riding along. Some need more, or if a student has prior board riding experience like wakeboarding or windsurfing, plus the right one-to-one -one coaching. They could potentially be independent in a single day, says Luke. If a student has prior board riding experience, plus the right one-to-one -one coaching, they could potentially be independent in a single day.
By the end of a course, you should have the knowledge and full skill set to make independent decisions and practice safely. This includes being able to assess each location and have a full grasp of weather, wind, tides and their impact, as well as knowing how to stay safe in all conditions. How do you know when you're ready to stop having lessons? First of all, it's essential that you're signed off by a qualified instructor, says Jones. They can give you a card stating that you have reached the suitable level, level 3 for ICO, to be independent and able to rent. Secondly, even if you have been signed off by an instructor, you must feel ready yourself. And it's always best to start with lessons whenever you feel unsure or go to a new kitesurf location. Denny agrees, the ultimate decision is between the student and instructor, and you should only kitesurf independently when you feel 100% ready. If not, book some more coaching. Supervision or due. What are the main challenges you'll face as a beginner? Building your confidence and trusting your equipment is the first hurdle for many. Being strapped to a kite can feel scary at first, but a good instructor will help you relax and show you just how safe modern kiting equipment is. Provided you use it right. Some people take a long time simply building up the confidence to get started. The biggest challenge for some is actually taking the plunge to sign up for their first lesson, says Jones. Beginners often get to grips with kite flying and body dragging through the water pretty quickly, but controlling the kite in all conditions. Getting up on the board and staying upwind usually takes more time, patience and practice. Denny points to another stumbling block, accepting that the wind strength and wind directions can change from what's forecast is a challenge for some. Some people struggle with this level of uncertainty so we always highlight it at the booking stage. What kit should you buy as a beginner? There's no need to buy anything straight away, as any good instructor will provide equipment. You'll have a better idea about what to buy once you've completed the course, the location you plan to kite in, for example. Will make a difference to the kite size you need, Jones advises. And you may outgrow some of your entry-level equipment if you buy too soon. Beginners often learn with a seat harness, a larger board and a flotation aid. Later on, you'll probably want to change to a waist harness, smaller board and lower profile impact vest. But there's always the option to part exchange or sell your equipment when you've outgrown it. Many kites, on the other hand, are suitable for all levels. The most common designs have an inflatable leading edge and a bridle to attach your lines to. At a beginner level, you don't need to worry too much about specialist designs, as modern, everyday kites usually come in standard, bow or, delta, shapes. Both are good for beginners. Other kite types include sea kites, lots of power and lift, hybrids, a cross between a sea kite and bow kite, and foil kites, used for hydrofoil kite surfing. When you are ready to buy, use your instructor to help you choose the kite and kit that's best for you. If you can't afford a range of different kite sizes, you may need to hire occasionally if the wind is too strong or too light for your own kites. Kitesurf kit is lightweight and easy to transport. If you don't have a car, you could catch a bus, taxi or carry your kit to the beach. Is it okay to buy second-hand gear? Buying an older board is fine, but newer is the better for kites, bars and lines. Jones explains, new equipment is always evolving, especially the kites. Equipment gets better every year. If possible, go for the latest and newest equipment you can afford and buy from a shop or person you trust. If you have one pot of gold allocated, then the majority of that should go on the best kite and bar possible. There are often excellent deals to be had on the previous season's kit, still new and with full warranty. This is a wise way to go, adds Denny. If you have one pot of gold allocated, then the majority of that should go on the best kite and bar possible. Do you need a license to kitesurf independently?
Generally speaking, you don't need a license but third-party liability insurance is recommended in case you injure another person or crash into their boat, car or expensive kitesurf kit. Are there any beginner-friendly clubs you can join? According to Denny, if you've learned on your local beach, then ask your instructor, they may be able to introduce you to other like-minded newbies they've taught, alternatively. Search online for local clubs, even if you're not based on the coast, there may be groups that organize events and social activities, as well as lift shares to kitesurf spots. Finally, any tips for that first lesson? Try to relax and feel the wind and kite with sensitivity, not brute strength, says Jones. Being tense, gripping and rushing will block that intuitive feeling and progression. Patience is important, too. Learning to kite surf is broken into steps. Each one is an important part of the progression process and has to be practiced. Kirsty Jones is a fully qualified kite surf, windsurf, surf and yoga coach, and a full-time professional kite surfer. She offers